welcome in. I'm Hunter Kenoki, and this is Fool's FAQ, a show where I take the internet's most burning questions and give you an answer that'll make you the smartest person at your next archaeological dig. On today's episode, the 66 million year old cold case. Picture this, your massive 40 foot long Tyrannosaurus Rex, king of your domain, having ruled over the earth for over 180 million years. I mean, life is good, the climate is warm, food is abundant, and your species has survived ice ages, volcanic eruptions, and every other challenge Mother Nature has thrown your way. Then, in a single day 66 million years ago, everything changes forever. The question that has fascinated scientists and captured the public imagination for decades is deceptively simple. Did an asteroid really wipe out all the dinosaurs? It's become such common knowledge that most people just accept it as scientific fact. Kids learn about it in elementary school. It's featured in countless documentaries, and Hollywood has turned it into blockbuster entertainment. But how solid is this cosmic catastrophe theory? And what did scientists believe before the space rock explanation dominated the conversation? The story is far more complex and controversial than you might imagine. For over a century, paleontologists had dozens of competing theories about what caused the most famous mass extinction in Earth's history. Some proposed gradual climate change, others suggested massive volcanic eruptions, and a few even speculated about everything from cosmic radiation to dinosaur diseases. The asteroid theory didn't even exist until 1980, and when it was first proposed, it sparked what scientists dubbed the Dinosaur Wars, one of the most heated scientific debates of the modern era. So, to understand how revolutionary the asteroid hypothesis was, we need to travel back to a small Italian town called Gubbio in the 1970s. Walter Alvarez, a geologist working on his doctoral research, was studying layers of limestone rock that preserved a perfect geological record of the boundary between the Cretaceous and Paleogene periods, exactly when the dinosaurs disappeared. Now, what Walter found was actually puzzling. A thin, dark clay layer just half an inch thick that seemed to mark the exact moment of the Great Extinction. Now below this layer, the limestone was packed with fossils of marine creatures called foraminifera. Above it, almost nothing. It was as if someone had drawn a line in Earth's history where life just stopped thriving. Now Walter brought back samples to Berkeley and showed them to his father, Luis Alvarez, a Nobel Prize winning physicist who actually worked on the Manhattan Project. The elder Alvarez suggested they analyze a clay layer for traces of extraterrestrial materials that continuously rain down on Earth from space. They expected to find tiny amounts of rare metals like iridium, which could help them determine how long the clay layer took to form. And what they discovered changed everything. The clay layer contained 30 times more iridium than they expected. And iridium is incredibly rare in Earth's crust, but much more common in asteroids and comets. Now, this wasn't just a small anomaly. It was a massive spike that screamed that something extraordinary had happened here. So the team began testing clay samples from the same geological boundary around the world, Denmark, New Zealand, Italy, everywhere they looked, they found the same iridium signature. Whatever had happened 66 million years ago wasn't a local disaster. It was global. Then, in 1980, the Alvarez team published their hypothesis in the journal Science. A massive asteroid roughly 6 to 9 miles wide had slammed into Earth with the force of 100 million hydrogen bombs, vaporizing on impact and spreading a layer of extraterrestrial dust around the globe. The collision had triggered an impact winter, a prolonged period of darkness and cold that killed off the dinosaurs and roughly 75% of all life on Earth. The scientific community's reaction was swift and brutal. Paleontologists who had spent their careers studying gradual evolutionary changes were suddenly being told that their beloved dinosaurs had been wiped out by a cosmic accident. The debate that followed was so intense that this is what participants called the dinosaur wars. And from that point, critics raised legitimate questions. Where was the impact crater? Why didn't other major asteroid impacts cause similar mass extinctions? How could a single event kill species all over the world while others survived? For over a decade, the asteroid hypothesis remained hotly contested. Then, in 1990, scientists made a breakthrough discovery. Using gravity measurements and oil drilling data, they identified a massive buried crater off the coast of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. The Cheek Shalhoub crater, as it became known, was roughly 125 miles wide and exactly 66 million years old, a perfect match for the timing of the dinosaur extinction. But the smoking gun wasn't just a crater size and age. Scientists found something even more compelling, shocked quartz. When an asteroid impacts Earth at high velocity, it creates pressure so intense that quartz crystals develop distinctive fracture patterns that can only be formed by massive impacts or nuclear explosions. 
These shocked quartz grains were scattered around the world in the same geological layer that contained the iridium spike. Thereafter, additional evidence kept piling up. Scientists discovered tiny glass beads called microtectites, droplets of rocks that had been melted by the impact and thrown hundreds of miles from the crater. They found evidence of massive tsunamis that had swept across the Americas. And every new piece of evidence pointed to the same conclusion. Something catastrophic had happened at Chicxulub 66 million years ago. But that's not the end of the story. The asteroid theory had competition. And even as evidence for the Chicxulub impact mounted, some scientists pointed to another potential culprit, the Deccan Traps in western India. These massive volcanic eruptions were happening around the same time as the asteroid impact, spewing enormous amounts of lava, carbon dioxide, and sulfur compounds into the atmosphere for nearly a million years. The volcanic hypothesis gained traction because, unlike asteroid impacts, massive volcanic eruptions have caused other major extinctions throughout Earth's history. The eruptions could have gradually poisoned the atmosphere, caused acid rain, and triggered climate changes that stressed ecosystems for thousands of years. This led to decades of scientific detective work. I mean, researchers had to determine not just what happened, but when it happened and in what sequence. Did the volcanism weaken ecosystems before the asteroid delivered the final blow? Did the asteroid impact actually trigger more intense volcanic activity? Or were the dinosaurs already doomed by volcanic climate change when the space rock arrived? Recent studies have provided increasingly clear answers. In 2021, researchers analyzing ancient peat deposits found that while the Deccan Traps did cause climate disruption, including a temporary cooling period about 30,000 years before the extinction, temperatures are returned to normal well before the asteroid hit. The volcanic effects weren't catastrophic enough to cause a mass extinction on their own. Meanwhile, evidence for the asteroid's devastating impact keeps getting stronger. Also in 2021, scientists found asteroid dust inside the Chicxulub crater itself, providing the final link between the impact and the global iridium layer. Recent climate modeling also showed that the impact threw so much dust into the air that it blocked sunlight for up to 15 years, shutting down photosynthesis worldwide and causing global temperatures to plummet by as much as 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. But here's where the story gets really fascinating. The asteroid didn't just kill everything instantly. The extinction process was complex and took time, which helps explain why some species survived while others didn't. Now, first off, try imagining something the size of an entire city, roughly 10 kilometers wide, roughly twice the size of downtown Los Angeles, slamming into the Earth at 43,000 miles per hour or over 69,000 kilometers per hour. The energy released was equivalent to several billion atomic bombs going all off at once. Within seconds, the force excavated a crater over 120 miles wide and sent shockwaves racing across the planet, triggering earthquakes, firestorms, and tsunamis that reached hundreds of miles inland. The air itself would have ignited from sheer heat, and hurricane force winds likely exceeded 620 miles per hour near the impact. It was a kind of apocalypse that makes everything in disaster movies look tame by comparison. However, the real killer is actually what happened next. Three types of particles filled the atmosphere. Sulfur compounds that created acid rain and short-term cooling. Soot from global wildfires and fine silicate dust from pulverized rock. And while the sulfur and soot settled out of the atmosphere within months to years, the dust lingered for up to 15 years. Now, this dust was incredibly effective at blocking the specific wavelengths of light that plants need for photosynthesis. Without photosynthesis, the entire food chain collapsed. Plants died first, then herbivorous dinosaurs, then carnivorous ones. Marine ecosystems suffered similar disruption as phytoplankton, the base of the ocean food web, could no longer photosynthesize. The species that did survive had certain advantages. They were small, requiring less food, could hibernate or go dormant, lived in burrows or underwater environments that provided protection from temperature extremes, or had diets that didn't depend entirely on living plants. This explains why mammals, birds, crocodiles, and some marine life made it through while large dinosaurs did not. So, did the asteroid really make the dinosaurs extinct? Well, the scientific evidence overwhelmingly says yes, but with important nuances. It wasn't just any asteroid, it was a city-sized asteroid that hit at exactly the wrong time, in exactly the wrong place, creating exactly the right conditions for global catastrophe. The impact occurred during a period when dinosaur diversity was already declining due to gradual climate cooling, which may have made ecosystems more vulnerable. The asteroid struck sulfur-rich rocks in a shallow sea, maximizing the atmospheric injection of climate-altering compounds, 
and it happened at a time when massive volcanic eruptions were already stressing global ecosystems, though not enough to cause extinction on their own. What makes this story remarkable is just how recent our understanding is. The generation that grew up watching Jurassic Park learned about asteroid extinction as established fact, but their parents lived through the scientific revolution that established this theory. In 2010, an international panel of 41 scientists reviewed 30 years of evidence and officially endorsed the Chicxulub asteroid impact as the primary cause of the end Cretaceous mass extinction. Today, we can confidently say that yes, an asteroid really did make the dinosaurs extinct. So, the next time someone tells you it was volcanoes, climate change, or asteroid impacts that killed the dinosaurs, you can confidently tell them it was primarily the asteroid, with a fascinating story of scientific discovery to back it up. Because sometimes, the truth really is stranger than fiction, and space rocks really can change the course of life on Earth. Thank you so much for listening to Fool's FAQ. Feel free to leave a five-star rating wherever you get your podcasts, as it also helps new listeners discover the show. For more fascinating answers to your burning questions, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and always stay curious. Stay curious.